What's up guys? I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnette, and welcome to my channel. So we are in the spooky season. We are close to Halloween. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do this video for you guys. I was super inspired by Wild Fern and her spooky repots. I love those videos so much. So I kind of wanted to do my little take on it. I wanted to share with you guys an experience that I had with a ghost. <laughs> Whether you believe in ghosts or not, this should be a entertaining video. I'm gonna go into basically the story. I'll go into kind of like a little travel guide, if you will. And also I'm going to be repotting this fern leaf cactus. So I have this giant fern leaf cactus and I have another propagation that I can't even pick up. It's probably around this size. And I'll go into basically why <laughs> it is in that state, why I'm literally propagating the entire plant. And I'll go into like repotting care tips and everything, but I'm gonna be telling you guys a fun little ghost story that scared the hell out of me. To be honest with you, it was the first and only time I've ever really experienced a ghost and it freaked me out till this day. This happened more than 10 years ago, it has to be, and I still think about it to this day. So let's get started. Let's repot this fern leaf cactus and let's get into our little spooky story time. So I might be a little bit blurry and kind of in the background, but I wanted the focus to be more on the repot than on me. So <laughs> that's why the camera is like that. I kind of refocus it to be more in there. Before we get started, I wanted to show you guys what I have, just so if you are not familiar with my repots, this is basically what I have. I have my plant here, my fern leaf cactus. I have a clean pot, this is cleaned. I have noticed that I have these Amazon um, pots that you get in like bulk, but they do stain. So this plant actually used to live in this pot, so I'm just gonna repot it back in the same pot. But I did bleach it, so it is, doesn't look like I bleached it, but I did. I also have some water with some Super Thrive in it that will actually help with the transition so it doesn't get too much transplant shock. A little bit of rooting powder. And I have my trusty repot box with a little tray. I have some pre-mixed soil. So this soil and a little old humidifier cup. I like to repurpose things. I like to reuse them. So this soil, as you can see, has a ton of perlite, bark. I put a lot of liquid in there. I actually ran out of bark. So I put as much as I could in there and I just kind of filled the rest of it with, le with LECA. But there's LECA, there's charcoal bits, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Really loose, chunky soil. That's what I like to do. So I have that pre-mixed and that's basically it. I can't believe I'm sharing this story because I know there's a lot of skeptics out there with ghosts and paranormals and stuff like that. And also I was kind of one too. Like I absolutely love like true crime and I love like horror movies and stuff like that. But when you experience it yourself, it's a little different. It completely, you know, it's completely different. Like you just, you have no idea what to expect. And I definitely did not. So. Basically, what happened was, we'll go from the start. So, my husband and I, now I will call him my husband throughout this story, but at the time we were only dating, we weren't even engaged. So my husband and I decided to take a road trip. We actually used to, for our dating anniversary, we would go on a trip every year at the end of November. So our old anniversary, our dating anniversary was November 29th. This was actually the trip that kicked off that tradition. We were like, let's just do this every year because it was just so much fun. So my husband actually surprised me with this trip. Um, we were kind of deciding on what to do for our anniversary and my husband's like, listen, I booked a hotel and we're gonna take a little road trip. I'm like, oh, fun. He wouldn't tell me where we were going. He was like, we're just gonna go like, he kind of basically just thankfully told me like what the weather was like so I knew how, what to pack. But he basically didn't like tell me any other details. He was just like, you know, we're gonna be walking so bring comfortable shoes and it could get kind of cool. Could get kind of chilly, but pretty similar weather to Florida. So, you know, don't pack too heavy. Really quick going into my plant, my repot. I wanted to show you guys <laughs> 
all three of these. These are basically what happened to this fern leaf cactus is this is one of the plants that I found the root mealies in. And instead of trying to treat it all, I just hacked it up and I put it in the propagation. These have been propagating for a while, honestly. Like this one probably has been propagating the most. Um, I think that one started propagating before I even found the root mealies. I just got a really long piece and I kind of just chopped it off and put it in there, but the roots look really great on that one. And then this one is actually just like, so what I did was I divided this into like the longer pieces and then this one I divided it into like the smaller pieces, which is still pretty big, but. Um, and then this was the longer pieces. Both these two propagations were from the mealies and yeah, they've been propagating for a little over two months, I think. It's, it's been a while, it's been a long haul. They actually don't root that fast. Um, if you see here, I put a little pothos cutting in there to help kind of root it faster. I don't know if you know this, but pothos actually have a natural rooting hormone in them. So if you have a plant that you're trying to water propagate, the pothos will actually speed up the root process. So I like to just throw in a pothos cutting. I have so many cuttings of pothos, it's unreal. So I usually just will put it in there and I do find that it does help with the root production. So really that's, I think that's all you really need to know about the plant and everything. So let's get back to the story. We're on the road. My husband doesn't tell me where we're going and we're like three hours in and I'm like, where the heck are we going? I see that we're getting into Georgia and I'm like, why are we going to Georgia? What the heck is in Georgia? and he's like it's a surprise like you'll have to just wait and see so i'm like okay like sure and <laughs> we we get to the exit for savannah and i'm like are we going to savannah and he's like yeah that's that's where you know we that's where i decided we would spend our first anniversary and oops, some of these rotted so I don't know if you see that. See that again. Definitely rotted. So some of these actually may have to go back. So we'll just kind of put these in the tray on I have on the side. Looks like the stem got kind of gross. Blech. But I'm gonna cut it off. So we get to Savannah. And we wind up parking over at a so savannah i don't know if you know this but savannah has like our hotel basically only would do valet so we were like uh you know we were not gonna stay like valet like whatever these ones actually seem pretty fine but pretty good roots so my husband decided to park at the i think it's the town hall or like the welcome center again this was like 10 years ago so i'm trying to like re-remember re like everything that happened um, but we basically park there and we walk to our hotel, which is only like two blocks away. And believe me, <laughs> this is important to the story. So it's like two, three blocks away, not super far, like a 15, 20 minute walk. So my husband, you know, we, we get into Savannah. It was kind of late when we got there. Um, so we basically just wound up kind of like walking around the city and getting dinner. And then we kind of called it early for the night cause, cause we had been driving all day and we were kind of tired. We get to our hotel room and you know, we t call it, a call it early. And the next morning, uh, I look for like these breakfast places. We go out for breakfast and while I'm at breakfast, I kind of look to see like, what can we do for the day? Cause I've never been to Savannah. I've never really been many places really around Florida. I have now, but I'm like, I've never been to like Georgia. I've never like seen all this stuff. So I'm like, what, what is there to do around here? I, when I looked it up, I kept seeing like the most haunted city in America and haunting, haunted, haunting, ghost, ghost, ghost. And I'm like, is this really like, is this really like haunted? And I look at my husband and I'm like, you, you took me to a haunted, city like this whole city is like haunted 
And he's like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. Like, it's fine. They just, they just say that. They just say that it's haunted. It's, it's just a Taurus trap. Don't worry about it. Well, I was like, well, you know what? Actually, that would be kind of fun. Let's do a ghost tour. So basically for the day, we just kind of walked around. That's what we basically do when we go visit any city. We do so much walking, but we walk around and stuff. And I booked, we booked a trolley ghost tour, which was really fun. Um, the ghost tour, like it was very informative, very historical. If you like that kind of stuff, I would recommend that if you go to Savannah to do the trolley tour, it was really fun don't have to do a ton of walking um it's like it will trolley you to like the spots like these creepy houses and stuff and cemeteries and it's kind of minimal walking you just kind of need to be able to like walk around the house and stuff so that was super fun it was the ghost store kind of ended around i think it was like around 11 midnight 11 30 midnight so my husband and I are like, all right, let's get a drink at one of the bars because Savannah, how they have it set up is they have like a riverfront and they have like a bunch of bars. I don't know if you know this about Savannah, but they have an open container law, which means that you can walk around with your beer, wine, whatever. Kind of like how they do in Vegas. We go into a bar, we get a drink, we drink a drink there, and then we take one to go. We're like, all right, we'll take this back to the hotel. It was probably like 1 a.m by the time we started heading back to our hotel. Now, mind you, it is November, so, or actually, I it's late November, early December. I don't remember exactly what day, but it was toward the, you know, it was winter, <laughs> basically. And we're walking, walking on the streets, heading back to our hotel, and nobody's on the streets. It's like empty, but I'm like, yeah, it's 1 a.m., like, you know. We walk past the cemetery, and I recognized it from the ghost tour. It was basically, they said that there's like this street next to the cemetery that they used to do dueling. So like, kind of like old school, like Western, like get your pistols out, like shoot off duel. And they would bury those people in that cemetery. I think it's still a working cemetery. If I am correct, I'm not 100% sure. It may just be like a historical thing, but it's still a cemetery. Like there's a lot of plots on there. I kid you not, I am not even joking. I'm not exaggerating. I promise you, we looked at the, we both were looking in the cemetery and it was that like low, like creepy fog that you would see on like movies. I'm like, is this real life? Like what the hell? And I'm kind of like skeptical about like ghosts. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, stuff like that. So. We get to our hotel and we're both feeling kind of, you know, tipsy. Feeling good. We're feeling really good. And we, you know, go to bed. You know, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I've had a couple drinks, I'm ready to go right to sleep because I just get so sleepy when I drink. So we're actually going to cut this piece off. Is that rotted? But it looks like I have some good roots, so we'll definitely need that rooting hormone. It's a shame that, that most of it is kind of rotted, but I went away for a week and I wasn't able to kind of really clean them out that well, so it's probably what happened. So we get to the hotel and we go right to sleep. It was, I don't even know what time it was. It was late at night, early morning, like still dark in the room. I'm like <laughs> the world's lightest sleeper. I sleep so light. You can, I will hear a pin drop and wake up. Like I, I just, I just am. So the way the room is set up is you walk in and so like behind me would be like the main door of the hotel room. To my left would be the bathroom and to my right is like a closet like a little closet door i look out and i can like from the bed and i can see like the light is on in the bathroom now the lights in this hotel room we stayed in the uh de soto i don't think i said that but it's called the de soto savannah and we look out i look out there and i i notice that the light is on in the bathroom and i'm like why would the light be on in the bathroom the lights are automatic. They come on as soon as they are hit C motion. So I'm like, that's kind of creepy, but I'm like, whatever, like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's nothing. 
so I go back to sleep. We go, so we're just like, you know, bopping around the city the next day and, you know, doing tourist stuff, drinking at bars, just kind of hanging out, having a good time. That night we get back to the hotel and we, so we go back to, you know, we go to, go to bed. <laughs> Have a, you know, it was on our third night. It's tipsy, still, you know, had a, a lot of drinks. And it's also really nice that you can just take a drink with you and go to your hotel room. Um, so I <laughs> go to bed and I wake up again to the sound of a, like a click sound. And I'm like, what is that? I look over and the bathroom light is on again. And I had mentioned it to my husband. I thought, like, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's weird. A bathroom light kept turning on. He's like, oh, you know, it's Savannah. It's kind of like laughing it off. But of course I was kind of like trying to not get myself scared. So I was like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's nothing, don't worry about it. And <laughs> So I, I was like, it's fine. So I tried to roll over and go back to sleep and you can hear it click off. So it was like, like clicked off. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I went back to sleep. I wake up and now I'm probably drifting back off to sleep. I wake up, it had to have been five to 10 minutes later. And I hear the, cl the clicking turn back on. And I'm like, what the heck? So I look over and I start to get a little nervous. I start to get a little weirded out. I kept thinking before that I'm like, oh, maybe it's a bug. Maybe it's like a bug that walks across the motion sensor or whatever, but I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's just kind of freaky. So I'm laying there like in bed, kind of like staring at the light that's like hitting the closet door. And I'm just staring at it and staring at it and I'm like, this is kind of creepy. My husband is sound asleep. He sleeps through hurricanes. So, so he literally can sleep through anything. He didn't hear a thing. The light stays on a little bit longer than it had, which is kind of weird, but I was like, maybe it's just not timing out correctly or whatever. I'm literally trying to come up with every excuse to not think it's a ghost and freak myself out. And then the faucet turns on. Full blast. Shh. I swear to you, I turned back over and hit my husband. I like hit him like, Tony, I swear to you, when my hand hit his body, the faucet turned off. And he's thinking that I'm going crazy. He's thinking that like, oh, you you heard it was haunted and now you're, yeah, you're manifesting it. And I'm like, I'm not, I promise you, I'm not that. I'm like, please get up. It's been hours since we've been since you know we we went to bed, go feel that sink. It's gonna be wet. He's like, oh, ha ha, Amanda, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm panicking at this point, freaking out. It had to have been early enough where I literally just laid in bed, eyes to the ceiling, like I could not sleep. I was like petrified, like I was so scared. And my husband just snuggles right back in and goes back to sleep, like nothing happened. <laughs> And here I am like paralyzed with fear basically. So I don't know when it was, but I know that it was starting to get light. Like the room started to get light. So I was, it had to have been maybe around five or six o'clock in the morning. And somehow I was able to kind of go back to sleep at that point. Cause I maybe thought like, oh, well if it's light out, the ghosts aren't gonna bother me. So if you remember, we parked at the town hall. Now on Sundays, which would have been our last day, we just had to get our car before I think 8 a.m. on Monday and we were leaving Monday anyway. So we were like, okay, we'll go get the car and we'll park it on the street because it's free on Sundays. So we, so he goes and gets the car and he's like, hey, I'm gonna go get the car. It's only a 15, 20 minute walk um just a couple blocks away i'm gonna go get the car and i'll meet you back you get ready like do your hair and makeup and i'll be back i literally begged and pleaded him to not leave i was like i i don't know i don't like this i had a weird feeling about it it freaked me out so much i was like i don't know you know i i don't have a good feeling i just 
don't want to be left alone in this room. And he's like, it will be fine. Just open the windows, make it really bright in here. Like, now mind you, it's the end of November, beginning of December. So there's going to be holiday movies playing. So I put on a movie, I don't remember the name of it, but it has Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. I remember that. And I just put it on while I was getting ready. But I was like, you will not catch me in that bathroom by myself getting ready. So I took a chair and I put it up to a vanity and I got ready right next to the TV <laughs> and the window. So I'm doing my makeup. I'm doing like my hair, my makeup, I'm getting ready. While also like double taking the, the bathroom because I'm like, this is too freaky. Like if, I feel like somebody's watching me. Like it just, like I had that weird feeling. I just didn't like it, but I'm like, you're an adult, you're brave, you got this, it's fine. If it's, if it's a ghost, it's just a ghost. Like, don't worry about it, it's not gonna hurt you. About five minutes after my husband leaves, I hear a very familiar sound. I hear the turn on. The lights in the bathroom turned on. And I'm like, no, no. No, this isn't happening. This is not happening. What the heck? My husband's gone. He's been gone for five minutes. He's probably halfway down the road by now. And I started freaking out. I started freaking out, but I'm like, you need to calm down. You need to take a deep breath. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Everything will be okay. So I was like, you know, trying to not think about it, watching the Christmas movie and just kind of doing my own thing. Well, um, the light turns off and I'm like, okay, cool, fine, whatever. Light turns off. Hopefully that's the last thing. And part of me wanted to get up and check, like to see, like maybe put my mind at ease, like maybe it is a bug. I feel a little bit more brave in the daytime. So I'm like, you know, I, I thought about it, but I didn't. I was like too scared to get up and like go check. Now this is like 10 minutes into my husband leaving by this point and I'm, in the middle of doing my makeup and the damn light turns on again and i'm like what the heck is going on like what the heck there either is a ghost or there's bugs or there's some kind of like electrical shortage because this is not okay it's motion censored so it only will turn on when there's motion so i'm like what the heck is going on i'm like maybe like the toilet paper is blowing in the wind or something there was no wind by the way, what wind? Like maybe the air conditioning or the, the heat? No. Um, so the light turns back on and I'm freaking out and I'm staring right down that like entryway where the three doors are. I'm staring at it and I'm like, what is that? And I look in, in front of the, no, the light is still on, in front of the closet door, now the closet door was one of the slotted doors that had um, basically like lines in it. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's the kind of, you know when you look at like a hot grill or the top of a car when it's hot outside, it has that like heat ripple, the whole door heat rippled. And I'm like, no, mm -mm. I was like freaking out. I was like panicked. But at the same time, I was also like low key paralyzed with fear. I was like, I cannot move. I cannot move. And somehow I got the courage or the, I was able to grab my phone, text my husband, you need to get back now. I call my mom out of sheer panic. And I was like, cause my mom is also one of those people who wants to stay in a haunted hotel. That's like one of her biggest goals is she wants to. She thinks it's fun. I don't think it's fun. So when I call her, I'm like, hey, mom, like I, I'm in a haunted hotel right now. This is what happened. And you know what she tells me? Oh, honey, don't worry. It's just a poltergeist. Don't worry about it. How does that put my mind at ease? How does that help me at all? <laughs> She's like, all they're gonna do is they're gonna turn the lights on, maybe the TV. 
like she's like they're not gonna it's not gonna hurt you and i'm like i understand that but i've also seen the movie and it's it i know that it doesn't turn out well and she was like laughing she thought it was funny she's like don't worry amanda it's fine like just you know be calm you know i'll get stay on the phone with you until your husband gets back but like it's okay don't worry about it what don't worry about it i'm stuck in this room with this ghost like freaking out so he gets back probably five minutes after i called my mom so i get off the phone with my mom and then he said okay we have to go down to the main lobby because the this is also kind of freaky and i never thought about it until i thought about this like story again but we had to go back down to the room because the magnetic strip on our key card didn't work well <laughs> like it would work off and on which like i mean that's kind of weird we're like all right well we gotta go to the main lobby and i got my composure i finished getting ready we went downstairs because after that we were just gonna like go to breakfast or whatever so i tried to be like really cool about it and like really excited about it to maybe get a honest reaction out of the hotel staff but i basically go up to them and i'm like we get the key card and i'm like hey really quick question but is this a haunted hotel and the guy that helped us he put a big smile on his face and he's like well He's like, Savannah's very haunted. It's a very haunted city. Um, we can't say that the hotel is haunted, but we have had people tell us, you know, stories and stuff here and there about it being haunted. And I, I like, I immediately switched gears. And I also saw the couple next to us checking in, like side eyeing us. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I wonder if they're like scared of ghosts. I know that like because Savannah is so haunted that 9 out of 10 times you're probably going to be in a haunted hotel or come across a ghost, they say. I think that there are some hotels in Savannah that want to be like a safe place for people and not like a haunted place. Like honestly, if I were to ever go to a really haunted city, I wouldn't want to scout out a haunted hotel again never we didn't know this was a haunted hotel so apparently the DeSoto was built in the 1800s like 1830 I think it was there have been reports of this hotel being haunted I looked it up um, even while I was there I couldn't find the review that I saw when I was there but I remember it vaguely I remember it pretty well I was laying on the bed the next night like that night the af like the after the morning that I had I was laying in bed like reading reviews like on TripAdvisor and they were saying that like someone said that like they could hear like children running up and down the hallways but when they like opened their door there was no kids which is I feel like way more creepy than like what I was dealing with but there had been people saying that like the you know like the TV would turn on or like a paper would fall off their desk or this or that so there has been a few articles that I've read about it where they basically say that like it's one of the most haunted places in Savannah but it's haunted by a friendly ghost so like Casper so I don't know I mean like that was like my first encounter with a ghost per se um, I don't really 100% understand what I saw. I think it was a ghost, but I don't know 100%. I, I don't know what a ghost would look like. You think that they'd be like holograms, like, you know, you see in like movies and stuff like that. And I learned actually on the ghost tour that some ghosts will show themselves differently. So I don't know. I really don't know. I really never have shared the story too many to too many people. Now I'm sharing it to the world, but like... I hadn't shared this with too many people just because like there's so many people who are skeptic there are so many people who are like yeah ghosts aren't real like this or that and it kind of like i don't know i feel like it kind of like diminishes what i went through because it was pretty traumatic to be honest with you like it stayed with me for this long i've had it in the back of my mind um, it's actually kind of funny because just last night, the night before I recorded this video, my husband and I are actually going to 
for Halloween and kind of for like a work trip for him where we're going to be flying to San Francisco. Now San Francisco is known for their rich history and kind of like ghost stuff and my husband goes to me the night after he booked the hotel. This is two weeks before we go and says, hey, I booked a hotel, but don't freak out. He's like, it is one of the most haunted hotels in San Francisco, but don't worry about it. No, I'm like, I'm not staying there. You know, I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Like, and this, I looked up the reviews for this. It used to be uh, Sir Francis something. I'll look, I'll put the name up here, but uh, yeah, this guy was not a good dude and like, he like committed suicide. Like, I don't want to stay there. And people are saying that they see like apparitions like in like the hallways, like the shining. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not, I'm not staying in that hotel. I was like, I told him last night. Now this is a week before we're leaving. And I told him, I'm like, I am not staying there. Like, I am not gonna stay there. Sorry, love ya, but we're gonna have to figure this out because I'm not gonna be able to sleep. There's no way that I'll be able to sleep. Absolutely no way. So that, that's basically my ghost story. I also realized when I do these repots that I repot my plants so fast that I sometimes repot faster than I'm actually talking. That's why I kind of like pause in between. Maybe I'll do like two next time, but I'm just giving this a little bit of water. It's actually now starting to leak out of the bowl. But this, it, look how big and full this plant is now. I will need to add a little bit more soil through the top. Hopefully this fern leaf will bounce back. I really loved this plant so much, but because the mealybugs, the root mealies, I had to just start over because it's just like, it was, it's, it's hard to treat them just because, you know, you can't really do much about it. They're in the roots. They're in the soil. You just have to really make sure that you like get them thoroughly. So I think that this is Probably an easier option if you have root mealies to just kind of start over. If you have a plant that's easily propagated, it's just easy to just kind of propagate the whole thing and start over. It does take a lot of time, but you know, I won't have any root mealies after this, hopefully. That's basically it. That is my ghost story. My little spooky story about me encountering a ghost. Part of me is like, I'm glad that we're not staying at the hotel in San Fran, but also it could have made for, you know, year two video, but um, I'd rather not have those stories. I just, I don't want to deal with that. It's, it's too weird. I don't like it. But let me know in the comments if you have ever had a ghost experience or any kind of ghost encounter, or even just something really creepy that happened to you that you were like, I'm not sure what that was. Let me know in the comments, cause I would love to discuss like creepy stuff. So that's it. I hope you guys all have a great day and happy Halloween.